Uh, Doug says, a few more strategies about how to work through menopause. Oof. Uh, when wife's interest drops suddenly. Um, oh boy. If you've watched my stuff, you've heard me preface these menopause um, discussions with the caveat of this is a very, very sensitive topic. Way more so than I ever thought it would be. Uh, there are teams of women, and men for that matter, I guess to be fair, um, in the medical community and otherwise, um, something as, I was going to say, as innocuous, as everyday, as normal, as healthy, as menopause, can be such a hot-bedded, hot-bedded, hot, whatever, hot-blooded topic, hot-bed issue. I don't know what the right phrase here is. It's controversial. And it, it splits people's, people into factions. There are, I've been introduced to this world, there are uh, women out there who genuinely believe that menopause is kind of like a conspiratorial made-up thing. That it doesn't happen. That there are pe some women in this world in certain cultures who don't even um, have a conception of menopause because they live a healthier, more holistic, nature-based um, lifestyle, which keeps menopause at bay and they never have to go through. It's bullshit. Menopause is a very real thing. I'm sorry if that's your thought pattern, but you are wrong. Oh, um, for those that don't know, menopause is basically mother nature's way of saying your baby making days are over. We're shutting the machine down. Sounds cold, but it's basically what it is. And in doing so, there's a whole series of, uh, hormones, Picture them as dials on a machine, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and all these other brain chemicals, and, and, and oxytocin, serotonin, and all these other things that all work in concert with each other to make what we call a fertile woman, a woman who can make babies. Well, at a certain point in life, and that certain point varies from woman to woman, some women, the process begins, and the, the early process beginning is what we call perimenopause, starts as young as they're late 30s, sometimes earlier, early 40s, mid 40s, late 40s. Um, then they start going through full-blown menopause when it's just like, you know, the machine says, shut it down. And then meow, all the dials get slammed down. And this is when the women start saying, I have hot flashes, I have difficulty sleeping, I'm irritable, I'm angry. And for a lot of women, this is, I'm sorry for the quick menopause lesson, but it surprises me how many people, men and women like, don't know what menopause is. Um, for a lot of women, part, not every woman, part of the awesome, and I'm being sarcastic, cocktail of what makes up the new menopausal woman's life is a reduced libido, a reduced sex drive. For some women, a completely eliminated libido or sex drive, as in the thought of doing that is repulsive to me. I used to have feelings for that. The thought of doing that would get me excited. I used to be responsive in nature. I didn't really think about it much, but once we got into it, I enjoyed it. Well, new me doesn't even enjoy it when I get into it. This is a lot of women say postmenopause. It is zero fault of their own. It's a biological thing. And like I say, some women are very much affected in that way. Some women are like, um, you know, talk about the different factions and groups that menopause is split into. Some women are like, Actually, menopause is a godsend because after I went through it, number one, my period stopped. Hallelujah. Um, some women really have very heavy, painful periods. Um, and some of those women say, and actually my libido increased. I became a horn dog after it. Relatively small group of women, but they exist. And some women say, I didn't even know I went through the whole process of menopause until I went to the doctor because of my irregular period and some spotting. And I was worried that something was going on. And they were like, uh, sweetheart, you're going through menopause. You're 53 years of age. And she's like, really? She didn't feel anything. Never felt anything negative. Never had any symptoms beyond the spotting. That, that happens. It's all over the place. So Doug's thing is his wife is of the camp of interest in any kind of intimacy just stopped with the old menopause. And uh, a lot of men are in your shoes. And a lot of men in your shoes are like, well, mine hasn't stopped. Uh, what do we do here? There's a, there's a lot of camps. When I talk about the different factions, there's a lot of factions and camps as far as 
what does a couple do, or more specifically, the man do or don't do, to help um, deal with, live with uh, this new dynamic. So if, if you're like a lot of marriages, it used to be, hey, honey, do you want to? No, maybe tomorrow. Hey, honey, do you want to? No, I don't feel like it. Okay, let's go. And then when you looked at the calendar, a lot of men keep a literal calendar for when they do it, which is kind of sad, but I get it. Um, they were like, ah, we're, we're good for two or three times a month kind of thing. And it goes that way for years and years and years. And then suddenly it stops. And like um, two or three times a month was minimum to keep me sane. <laughs> so I didn't go up on a, on a tower somewhere and start picking people off with a rifle. Um, now that's gone. And I don't, I don't feel good. I, uh, my mental health is suffering, physical health. I don't, I, all I can think about is doing the act. I'm a, you know, healthy American, still virile, red-blooded American male here, and I still have a desire. Well, a lot of people, the solution that they say is, suck it up, dude. You got a wife. Till death do you part. Um, who gives a shit about your needs in that way? Grow the F up. You're married to an older woman who's gone through menopause, and you made vows to her that you wouldn't step outside of the marriage. So what are you saying? You want to go get some tail on the side? You can't do that. Most men hearing that go, no, I don't want anything on the side. I want my wife. Well, then you go to wife and wife says, that's cool, but I'm off limits. Now what are you going to do? There's no easy solution here. Um, there are solutions. I'm making air quotes for people that may be listening to this later, not seeing the video. Solutions may include hormonal replacement therapy for the woman. Oh, you want to talk about something controversial. Years ago, there was a study done on hormonal replacement therapy in women. And since that study has come out, it's basically been picked apart by anybody in the know, anybody with any kind of scientific knowledge in regards to hormonal therapy. It was, not, it was a very flawed study, not definitive in any way, shape, or form. But what the study showed was that uh, a sizable chunk of the human female population, when administered exogenous estrogen, for example, um, their can there, certain types of cancer rates increased breast cancer, for example, uterine cancer, whatever, um, give them a lot of estrogen. All of a sudden tumor growth went through the roof. Take that study, put it out to the general public. And now probably I was going to say the majority, I don't know, maybe like half the women, if I were to go on the street and say, what do you think about hormonal replacement therapy, post-menopause, probably half the women out there would say cancer. Doctor told me cancer. I, I can't do that. Um, I would just say to ladies, you may be part of the very small percentage of women who are predisposed to estrogen sensitive types of cancer in the body. If so, yes, don't take exogenous extra estrogen. Don't do that. Um, but for a lot of you, it may very well be a godsend for you, not just in terms of sex drive, uh, rates of heart disease go down osteoporosis, you brittle bones, that's brittle bones are as a result of your hormonal, those dials getting turned down. Um, yes, sex drive, skin quality, just everything improves for a lot of women. Not every woman does the proper hormonal replacement therapy regimen. Proper is the key. You got to go to a place that knows what the hell they're doing. Uh, not every woman going through that says, oh, I'm a new woman born again, but a lot do. And they get regularly checked, and their blood works fine, and there's no cancer. Their, heart does, their heart, blood pressure goes down, the libido goes up, and there's their man over there going, got my wife back. This is awesome. Um, but now we're getting into some sensitive stuff because uh, there is kind of this overall sentiment, thought pattern that I and others have noticed, and that is this. Uh, I'm kind of backing up. This is going to sound like a left turn, but this will all make sense. If I go to a group of people, half men, half women, let's say a hundred men and a hundred women, the husband's wives, we split them up. And I go over to the husbands and I go, husbands, listen up. Um, your, your wives have confided in me something. I go one at a time and I tell them in this, there's some things about you, your behavior, things about your physicality, whatever that she is, doesn't like. She's turned off by them. It makes her not like you very much. 
from what I have seen based upon surveys that I have done, based upon content that I have put out there and so forth, the reaction from the, dare I say, vast majority of men is that they sit upright and go, well, tell me, what is it? What can I do to improve? I don't want to lose my wife. I want to be the most attractive guy I can possibly be. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm a shithead who dropped the ball here. I'm not being a very good husband. What can I do? I, I don't want to lose my, my wife, my family, and everything else. Same thing. I go over to the women one at a time, and I say, look, your husband over there, he's confided in me. There's something about you physically. There's something about things you do that he doesn't find very attractive. What do you say about that? Uh, the majority of women that I have polled, that I've responded to videos I've done and so forth, it's almost the exact inverse. Let's say it's like 90% of the men said, what can I do to, to improve? I don't want to lose my wife. 90% of the women on the other side of the aisle basically say, you can go F yourself. So we have like this cultural thing, which gets in the way. Now, what's the source of that cultural thing? Trying to empathize with women. I think go F yourself will be quickly followed by, do you realize all the shit I do? I'm the one who takes on the emotional burden of fill in the blank. Uh, my husband doesn't have clue one about, he couldn't even name a, one of my kids' teachers. He doesn't know about all this event coming up. He doesn't know about this other event coming up. He doesn't know about this. I'm the one who sets the schedule. I'm the one who makes the doctor appointments. I'm the one who does this. I'm the one who does that. I'm the logistical manager of the domestic life that we have. On top of I work, on top of I spit out one, two, three kids and it just ruined my body. And that's something I've been emotionally trying to deal with and physically trying to deal with for years. All this stuff is just weighing very heavily on me, my shoulders as a woman. And here comes Jackass Husband or somebody speaking for Jackass Husband saying, um, not very attracted to you. Knee-jerk reaction, go to hell. For men, knee-jerk reaction, oh shit, I don't want to lose my wife. So we in turn as men say, oh, there we go. It's just, she doesn't give a shit what I think. I think that, right or wrong, that... that uh, cultural, whatever, trend, whatever you want to call it, it kind of bleeds into this whole world with the menopause thing. So if you husband go to postmenopausal wife or wife who's going through a menopause, perimenopause, and say, you've changed um, in a roundabout way. I know you wouldn't say this, but in a roundabout way, what you're saying is, I don't like it. Uh, I've even heard some men say to the wife, and this makes me go, ooh, ouch. I wouldn't have married this version of you. That says a lot, doesn't it? Um, this is unattractive in your behavior. You're, you're grumpy, you're angry, you're, you're snapping at me all the time. You don't want any kind of physical intimacy. I can't touch you, I can't talk to you, I can't do anything with you. I don't like this person. And it, this has happened ever since you went through this menopause thing. Uh, have you thought about hormonal replacement therapy? Knee-jerk reaction on the part of the woman? You can go F yourself. We know why you're trying to get me to do this. It's not for my health. It's just because you want my pants. Let's be honest here, mister. And if man was honest, he would say, that's a big part of it, sure. But the other part is that, again, I just don't like this new you. And I'm hoping, I, I hear that there's hope here for a change. Maybe you want to look at that. And a lot of women, again, say, go F yourself. So you have a lot to work against. Um, my wife is 42 years of age. She's concerned about... Uh, those hormonal knobs getting turned down. She's been way more tired than usual. Uh, it's tougher to stay in shape. To go to the gym, to energy to do that, she's like, Ugh. And so, kudos to her. Part of her resolution for this is, let me go talk to a doctor about it. And they're like, you know, again, kudos to you. You're proactive. Hallelujah. A lot more women are more proactive these days about this kind of thing. And they ran some tests and they determined, oh, your thyroid's kind of way under uh, utilizing and working, not working to the level it should. Here's the little pill you can take on a daily basis, like armor or whatever the th thyroid med is called, and started from there. And then she just actually went back yesterday for a follow-up to do additional blood work, see where she's at with everything, how things are going. Why is she so proactive in this? I would love to say because her husband, me, is just so awesome and she has to keep up with me. No. <laughs> um, maybe that's you know a lot of pieces of the puzzle. Maybe that's one little tiny piece over here. I, I want to be a good 
good wife to my husband and, and stay as sexy as humanly possible. Okay, maybe that's one little piece. But the, I think most of the pieces of the puzzle consist of culturally, that's, um, I guess, her family, her social group over the years. Her mother has been on uh, hormonal replacement therapy since menopause, and she's 70 some years of age and still on it. So culturally, it's part of my wife's world. And also my wife is a medical doctor, so she's well-versed in that world. She knows what's bullshit, what's not. She's done her research, and she's determined that this is something she wants to look into. So she's very proactive about it. Hey, doctor, do you think hormonal stuff is something I should pursue now? And the doctor says, no, you're, you're not there yet. Maybe in the next few years, but as far as right now, look at all your levels. They're fine. So she's good there that way. Um, so when I tell a lot of guys, yeah, my wife went to the doc and the thyroid thing, whatever, they all sit up and go, how'd you get her to do that? My wife won't even uh, think about doing that. I was like, well, probably because her mom did and mom's friends do. And she's from Europe, from Germany, and maybe it's more socially acceptable there versus here. I don't know, but uh, I think that's a big, big part of it. 